Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over uh, total internal reflection and how we can calculate the critical angle so that we can get total internal reflection to occur. Total internal reflection occurs when all of the incident light reflects off of the boundary between two materials. So none of the light crosses the boundary is reflected. It's all totally internally reflected. And for this to occur, we must have two conditions, or two conditions must be met. The light that's traveling through material, the light needs to be traveling through material with a higher index of refraction and approaching a material with a lower index of refraction. That means the material on the other side of the boundary has to have a lower index of refraction. Also, the angle of incidence has to be greater than the critical angle. All right, and this is what we mean by that. All right, we have two materials. The upper material is represented with an index of refraction of N2. The lower material on the other side of this boundary has an index of refraction of N1, and our light ray is going to be traveling up from the bottom. And we have here, it says, tells us that N2, the material on the other side, has a lower index of refraction. So we know that we can have total internal reflection if we reach the correct index, uh, excuse me, angle of incidence. If the light strikes this light ray, at a 90 degree angle like I have it here, it just travels straight across and leaves that boundary or enters the other material at an angle of 90 degrees to that boundary. But if the light strikes that boundary at an angle, then it's not going to travel straight across because we know from our Snell's law and what we know about Snell's law that when it travels across that boundary into a material with a lower index of refraction, it's going to be bent away from the normal line. So this is our angle of refraction. This is our angle of incidence. When this is true, then the angle of refraction is going to be greater than the angle of incidence. Okay, now, not only is that light ray refracted across that boundary, or refracted when it travels across that boundary, but some of the light is actually going to be reflected off of that boundary. Now, you can see this is at 100%. This is showing that 70% of the light is traveling across that boundary, and 30% of it, or a small amount of it, is reflected off of that boundary. Okay? Now we're going to increase the angle of incidence. This angle of incidence is greater than this angle of incidence. And half of the light is being refract, ref, refracted, because it travels across that boundary, and half is being reflected off of that boundary. And you can see we've increased the angle of incidence, and therefore we have also have to increase, or therefore the angle of refraction also increases. Now, if we increase the angle of incidence even more, like we have here, then more of the light is going to be reflected than it's going to be refracted across that boundary. And you can see, once again, angle 1, angle 2, and the third angle of incidence. They're getting bigger, but so is the angle 1, 2, and 3. The angles of refraction are also getting bigger. And you'll notice that this light ray looks like it's kind of just falling down right onto this boundary. And as that occurs, more and more of the light is reflected off of that boundary. Now, if we get to the right angle, the right angle of incidence, then the light will travel right across, excuse me, right along that boundary. When that occurs, we know that we have an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. Well, that only occurs for a special or for one angle of incidence, this being the angle of incidence. And when this light ray travels at that boundary, we have an angle of refraction of 90 degrees, and that angle of incidence is called the critical angle. So the critical angle is that angle, and the critical angle is the angle of incidence that produces an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. And that only occurs for one angle of incidence. Okay, so that's kind of the definition of the critical angle, the angle of incidence that produces an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. Now, if we increase the angle of incidence just a little bit more, anything over the critical angle, like this angle right here, this angle of incidence is bigger than this critical angle, then none of the light gets refracted across the boundary, none of the light travels along the boundary, and all of the light, totally all of it, will be internally reflected. And that's what we call total internal reflection. That occurs when the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle and all of the light 
is reflected off that boundary back into the material from which it came. Okay? Now, let's go through and do a little calculation and see how we calculate and how we derive the equation for the critical angle. All right, so once again, we have a light ray striking that surface. It's coming up from a material with a lower index of refraction. On the other side is material with a, excuse me, from a higher index of refraction. On the other side of the boundary is material with a lower index of refraction. That meets our first condition. And if we have the right angle, that angle of incidence will produce an, uh, an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. And we want to know what angle what angle will produce that, that angle of refraction of 90 degrees, and that angle we call the critical angle. Okay, we're going to go through first and derive the equation for the critical angle, and we're going to use Snell's law. Okay, now you'll notice here is our angle of incidence, or here's the angle of incidence, and this is the sign of the angle of incidence. Now we want to know what angle of incidence will produce an angle of refraction of 90 degrees. So I'm going to replace this theta 1, which is we use for our angle of incidence, and just put in here theta of a critical angle. It's, it is the angle of incidence, but it's a special angle of incidence called the critical angle. All right, now I want to solve for this term. Okay, I know both of the indices of refraction. I know the angle of refraction. I want it to be 90 degrees, so I'm going to solve this angle here, the critical angle, when will that give us an angle of 90 degrees for a refraction. So the sine of the critical angle is now equal to n1, excuse me, n2 times the sine of the angle of refraction divided by n1. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put all, I'm not going to put all the values in there. Usually I put all the values in there next. I'm just going to put the sine of 90 degrees because that is a special sign, so to speak, because the sine of 90 degrees is 1. So n2 times 1 is n2. So in a sense, I can cancel this term out because 1 times any number is just that number. So the sine, the critical angle, is now going to be equal to n2 times 1 sine of 90, but I'm not going to put the 1 in there. So it's just n2 divided by n1. So this is the equation we use to calculate the critical angle. And you'll notice it's just the sine of the critical angle is the index of refraction of the material on the other side divided by the index of refraction for the material that the light is traveling through. Okay, it's just n2 divided by n1, n2, the index of refraction on the other side, divided by n1, the index of refraction of the material the light is traveling through. Now, we can just substitute our values in. So the sine of the critical angle is equal to 1.00 divided by 1.33, and that means the sine of the critical angle is 0.75. Now, this is not the critical angle, right? This is the sine of the critical angle. So in order to get the actual critical angle, you have to use the inverse sine function on your calculator. A lot of times you have to push second function sine, which has that sine to the minus one or sine raised to the power of minus one on it. You put that in on your calculator and you type and then you press in, and then you enter 0.075 and you get that the critical angle in this case is 48.6 degrees. Okay, so if I have air and water and I want the light to be reflected back in, all of the light to be reflected back in, so I have total internal reflection, I have to shine a light at that boundary at an angle greater than 48.6 degrees. And if I do that like this, then all of that light will be reflected off of that boundary. Totally all of it will be internally reflected and we call that total internal reflection, okay? So that is a general background for a description of total internal reflection. That's how you calculate total internal reflection. This is the equation we use to calculate the angle, the critical angle, and I hope that was helpful. If you follow those steps, I think you can solve those problems. If you thought that was helpful, please leave me a thumbs up or a comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much.